uh, I hope it wasn't a huge challenge to get here, especially after the chaotic last 24 hours. Uh, but I'm glad to be uh, on stage with uh, these wonderful people. Um, so I'm going to ask each of you guys to give a quick, uh, maybe a you know 30 second introduction, you know, uh, on on how you guys have uh, started and built uh, you know the firms that you guys represent, right? Prashant, we'll start with you. Thanks, thanks, Nabil, and thank you, E4M, for arranging IDAC and giving the due recognition, respect to independent agencies, which is much deserved, I think. We, we have the hard way up, and it's so good to see a full audience uh, after a humbling and horrifying experience last evening. Uh, so this is about a decade ago, about 15 years back, that this uh, idea struck and uh, somehow just stumbled upon the opportunity of doing something in digital. Uh, so it's just been over a decade, and today we run a 270-people agency in Bombay with a big focus on performance marketing and slowly endeavoring to becoming a full-funnel marketing agency because that's the, that's the new normal of what we need to do post the pandemic. Uh, largely working with enterprises, brands in the banking, financial space, and e-commerce. Uh, that's what we do. And uh, I think our superpower is uh, building business KPIs for our clients. And that's what we're really known for. And I'm very happy to be here with uh, my, my fellow colleagues. Thank you. So uh, I'm representing Grapes Digital. Uh, my CEO couldn't make it because of the rain, so flight got delayed. I'm the business head for Mumbai, uh, Aniket Tsunane, and been in, been in this industry for 15 years now. And we are the, a nine-year-old agency. Uh, complete 360 solution provider to our clients. Uh, we, we look into everything uh, that a client is, you know, trying to achieve in his uh, journey. And, you know, we try to be the partner, the partner that everyone is looking out with the agility that every brand today needs. And that's, that's all. Thank you so much, Aniket. Uh, Pooja has had a very, very, uh, I would say, uh, colorful uh, career path, I would say, and I would be all love to know more about uh, your journey. Sure, so I'm just going to take a leave from where he left. I'm the client who demands all of you guys to be in the part of my journey to get the business done. So I represent uh, Tata Motors and I take care of uh, consumer marketing for all passenger vehicles. Uh, prior to this, I had a short stint with Paytm, again, where uh, you know, was looking at e-commerce. And uh, prior to that, I spent 16 and a half years with Unilever, looking at the foods brands, Glow and Lovely, and looking at almost across the world, uh, brands coming to India, South Asia, and Southeast Asia. So yes, um, not from the agency world, but from the cruel client world <laughs> for all of you guys. But, uh, you know, I'm happy to be here and happy to understand what's, uh, what's new in the digital world and how it can help us to deliver business and to make consumers' choices much more simpler. So that's me. Thank you so much, Pooja. And now we'll move to Akhil. Thanks, thanks, Nabil. Thank you, E4M, for the opportunity. I think lovely to see a full house, uh, like Prashant mentioned. I think uh, I, think I represent uh, Part of what Pooja said is the other side of business, the agency side. Uh, I represent a company called Big Trunk. We are a full service agency, digital, uh, about 12 years old. Uh, we do everything in that space, media, performance, creative, SEO. Uh, we've catered to the needs of, of almost every category that exists in, in uh, the space today. Uh, we are about 200 people as an enterprise or getting there uh, as we speak. Uh, I think uh, this is interesting as, as a forum also because uh, this entire group, apart from Pooja, represents about 10% of the agency universe. The, the other 90% is with the, the big six, right? And if we have a forum commissioned for, uh, for the bottom 10, it, it's one of those rare occasions when we feel happy to be part of the bottom 10 percentile, right? Uh, I think it's also interesting because, uh, because E4M took uh, took digital to literally, Nabil was supposed to be on the panel and about an hour back he got to know that he's going to moderate. <laughs> so it's, it's as dynamic as life can get. 
uh, and uh, again we were uh, we are thankful because we got puja on the same panel we've uh, all uh, very fleetingly shared our decks shared our visiting cards shared our emails with her so and requested her to uh, to give us ROs on one product each so the ones who can relate will know what i mean okay so thank you so much e4m for the opportunity uh, we look forward to have an interesting session thank you thank you guys uh, i will introduce myself now uh, i represent howl i'm the co-founder and ceo of howl uh, we are, i'm much younger in terms with in compared to the rest of the panelists younger how i'm i'm hoping not age no <laughs> So we just completed seven years uh, this year, a couple of months ago. We're a team of 85. Uh, we're a full stack a digital firm focusing more on content, uh, adding the performance, you know, and the growth media piece, uh, you know, to the mix as well. But uh, yeah, I'm so happy to be, you know, sharing stage with these wonderful people. Uh, Akhil, I'm going to stay with you on this, the first question. I think the first thing we're going to be talking about is, you know, uh, adapting to the new digital order. I think it's become uh, a norm, you know, it's, 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 it's something that cannot be ignored at all, right, you know, and, and within this part, you know, the first question I'm going to ask is, how have agencies evolved, you know, to meet, you know, uh, the fast change, uh, you know, pace of the digital landscape, right, things are changing uh, very quickly, what was there six months ago, right, uh, has suddenly, you know, taken center stage, right. Something I can I can talk about one thing like give give one example and you know give the stage to you, uh, quick commerce right like something that's adapting so quickly in the last two and a half three years, in 2020 it just started and now suddenly we're all talking about media on these platforms so yeah I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Sure. So uh, I think one of the things like you said is our categories have evolved, quick delivery services, uh, anything to do with delivery, e-commerce has taken shape, Flipkart started quick delivery. But I think from an agency perspective, I think uh, I'll, uh, a few pointers from my end is, I think agencies have sort of adapted to the new age data order, correct? So everything that we do, I'm, I'm not saying life is not data earlier, but the sheer size of data that agencies have embraced in recent times, correct? Every decision that agencies have to take is very dependent on data, be it the analytics that they have in the back end, be it the, the CRM of the client, be it, be it any other tool that they have to evaluate. Everything is, is, is data dependent. Assume that you're running a campaign, right? Uh, unlike traditional where you will have to wait for the campaign to get over, everything is real time. Right? I, I start a campaign, which is omni-channel by the way, we use multiple channels in digital, which of them is performing, which creative is performing, what are changes that I need to make on the go, a large part of that is, is data driven. And I think as agencies or, or as, as partners to clients who deploy large monies obviously, right? It, you, you, there's, there's expected to be bang on the buck there. So I think uh, agencies with the new world order are, are bringing in efficiencies on media deployment. I think that's, that's one part. Uh, the second is the entire application of AI in this category. When I say uh, AI is, is for all of us a very a very used word, I would say, right? But there's, there's real deployment of AI, at least in the space that we are. We, keep, we were just discussing how creatives by AI across various tools can be, can be optimized. One part of it, I represent media again. So on programmatic that buys that we do, there's, there's an entire AI backend that can help you optimize bids when you start. You could possibly set it on auto and let the machine learning optimize it for you. There is creative testing today that can be optimized or, or by, by AI. You run three separate videos together and define say a view rate or a, or a view through rate on each of them and then say are all videos where there's 50% completion rate, deploy them with higher impressions, correct? There is personalization that AI is enabling. today. Uh, all of us sitting here have different interests. So I may be shown an, an Abu Dhabi tourism ad, which is about Formula One, while she may be shown an ad about a water park. Yeah. Correct? So that's, all of that is, is on the fly today. So AI has large application there. I think agencies have also taken up to integrated media campaigns. Today, uh, like I mentioned, Omnichannel. Today, uh, assume that I run a CTV campaign. Uh, I, I show somebody a CTV ad on, 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 in the house and then I use the same Wi-Fi for device IDs and then target him if he, if he or she possibly passes a hoarding, 100 meters of that geofencing. I've got the device ID. So it's, 
we agencies have again embraced this entire integrated approach it's not isolated today and the consumer sees a unified message he doesn't get different messaging yes there's frequency that increases but it's unified in that sense i don't have random communication on different media so i think from a a more technical perspective these are things i think that agencies have embraced in the new digital order transformation is a is is the mother possibly but at, as people who run agencies there's more to it there there are these layers that enable better roi from my perspective wow that was amazing thank you so much i think he spoke like pretty much all our thoughts i would Sorry, say i just have to yeah. say one thing to him i get served you, <laughs> <laughs> you know in abu dhabi ad that you mentioned <laughs> and we served more of the formula 1 car racing than you would be <laughs> given that amount of search that i do on cars so I'm, I'm, yep. yeah oh that yeah. way <laughs> that way is okay. not the water park but more cars are coming <laughs> my way i'm i'm going to come to prashant uh, on the same uh, question and i'm sure that he's going to add a lot more to what uh, akil has said but what are your thoughts on uh, you know the fast pace uh, changes that are happening in the digital landscape and how are agencies adapting to that i think the last two or three years has seen probably the biggest change for us and i would probably talk about our change at three different levels at a business level at a service level and at a solutioning level i think at the business level our role has moved from being a service provider slash vendor as we were popularly called to a strategic business partner we increasingly seeing our role to be in the cxo's office where we are actually expected to deliver business kpis and we are playing a significant role in business mandates today with customers so much so that we see client teams and us collaborating together as one team and presenting it to a cmo that's a huge shift where we are seeing our roles becoming more strategic in nature at a business level similarly at a business level we are seeing synergies especially with indip independent players like us like ahmed mentioned earlier today in the morning we work with uh, we work so much with uh, you know we promise this doesn't happen during our campaigns huh, for all the clients <laughs> who are here it works seamlessly i promise So I was saying we work together uh, as GZP or where we working full funnel. So I think the new agency order is to form synergies. It, it's it's a time where uh, you complement strengths and you go to a client with a full funnel marketing approach. That that's the new order. At a service level, I think it's not about SEO anymore, or it's not about paid search and paid social. I think at a performance marketing company, the approach is now more about how do you build an organic growth stack. an organic growth stack would involve search would involve content marketing would involve content of all formats would involve vernacular voice video it's it's basically the game has changed in terms of the way you approach the business in a media stack today it's just not about running paid ads it's about how can you how can you approach ad tech with martech that line is completely blurring how do you get lead acquisition and take someone down a journey and basically even determine life cycle value so that's that's the that's how the business has evolved and that's really what uh, agencies are now expected to do especially when you're working with uh, enterprise clients and i think that's the biggest shift uh, that we need to adapt to thank you so much prashant uh, i'm going to come to uh, pooja because pooja is on the client side right uh, how are you dealing with this uh, you know ever evolving change in the digital landscape how are you keeping up you know to these changes uh to new ideas innovations that are happening across functions and not you know specific to platforms or any of those things right how are you managing to keep up with this i think it's um it's a very simple answer to that okay. i need to be where my consumer is right okay. and uh, if that's the thought process that i go with um i need to be able to be at every touch point that i can influence for him to be and hence my agency also needs to be that agile and when i talk about consumer it's just not about the awareness but like he said uh, it's much more hard working now that uh, we expect 
and we would need that guidance from all the agencies who are there to partner with us, reach that consumer, and ultimately help build the business uh, for us. So, so I have one follow-up quick question, yeah. that, right? How, how, what is, you know, how are things changed for you specifically, working with an agency partner, say, 10 years back versus today? Maybe oh, it's, that, it's much yeah. more, um, so, it's much more difficult and uh, it's not very straightforward anymore, right? So the lines between a traditional agency versus a digital agency versus a media agency is blurring for us as well. So we don't uh, now work like, you know, you're just my creative agency, you are my digital performance agency, and you are my ATL agency, right? The above the line agency for media deployment. It isn't like that uh, anymore. And especially at Tata Motors now, what we do is connect almost every fortnightly with all the agencies who are on board with us to just jam and see, you know, what's, what's happening in this month. How can we change? Uh, what can we improve? What are the learnings that we've got from campaigns which have run for first 15 days? And what is the changes that we need to do? So from a client perspective also, um, the expectation is not now anymore that you know you put an input and you know month end pe dekhenge or quarter end pe dekhenge ki kya ho raha hai it's much more agile and like you said um, we don't look at agency partners for their specific roles that they play they are growth partners for us and uh, to help deliver the growth we uh, we are very open in sharing all the stuff right with with each okay. one of them so um, it's that agile it's that um, it's that demanding from the agencies as well as from the client side. Okay, Aniket, what do you think is the new digital order? Just continuing from where Pooja said about agility, you know, uh, it's no longer like I have transitioned from an uh, main line to digital long back and I clearly see, uh, you know, agility is what is the need of the hour. Like something that is happening like just two days back Coldplay was, you know, trending and you know there's so many things that are happening and as a brand if you haven't caught up on something you know you're gonna miss the bus yeah. and this is this is not like in mainline you had days to come out of something today you just have few hours because before you there's someone else sitting in some some other corner thinking about his brand and putting out there yeah so if you're not gonna be there like I see today everyone talking about brands like Zomato and all of those, but nobody's seeing that. It's 10 years that what Zomato has been doing that you today see the results. Yeah. Now, every brand today that I have a conversation like, I want to be the next Zomato or let's have a conversation like Zomato. But brands also need to think, are we ready to invest that kind of time? Are we, the, are we going to design our brand architecture in that format and stick to it for next 10 years? So something of that front, like, uh, like Pooja said, now it's no longer vendor and a vendor and a relationship. It's growth partners. So you and I together are not going to be here for, let's say, we've drawn a contract for 12 months and after that we are going to go and you're going to go. You know, it's not like. While those things are there, it's always a long-term relationship that is going to help both of us. If a brand needs to grow from where it is today to where it wants to, it needs to have a constant growth partner. That's how I see the business is moving. Thank you so much, Aniket. Now, I've got a one-word answer for all of you guys. If you all had to describe your company's digital transformation journey in a movie title, starting with Prashant, <laughs> what would it be? I think it would be The Matrix. <laughs> because it's a constant uh, integration between the uh, real world and the virtual world. And since you talk about the machine world in The Matrix, and today it's all about the machine learning. I think uh, that's the constant battle we uh, fight with. And like Pooja said, it's all about integrated offerings now. I'm sure she would love to brief one person and make sure it runs across full funnel, top funnel, mid funnel, bot funnel, <laughs> offline, <laughs> online, everywhere. And it's, it comes and to be her. like Zomato. Yeah, and, and, and it comes to our, her in a dashboard with all KPIs delivered there. And that's what she opens every morning and is either happy or not too happy. And uh, that's basically where it is. So it's the integration of uh, offerings and I think the matrix. The matrix. Aniket. More of a Bollywood person. And we are also from that. So I think it's Ek Dujay Ke Liye. 
<laughs> Even if you don't understand <laughs> what… <laughs> louder maybe, I don't think so. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. I said it's ek, ek doje ke liye. Even if you don't understand the language, you don't understand what the other person… But we are going to work hard together and we are going to stay there. Nice. So yeah, it's ek doje ke liye, that's, that's, what the, that's what for me it is. Pooja, you're going to be representing Tata Motors for this one. <laughs> so which, which uh, movie do you think is… Uh, I'm, I'm not going to represent Tata Motors here, but I think at a personal level and as a marketeer, okay. uh, I still go back to some traditional stuff and I would say inside out one and inside out two. And the reason I say that is no matter what you do, if you don't get the emotions right for the consumer, no matter whatever happens, you're not going to be in their consideration set. So whilst we will do all the fortnightly meetings, all the number crunching every day, but if you still don't get, get what the consumer wants, then you're not there. So for me, that's, that's it. Akhil. Yeah, for me, uh, I think, everyone's seen Moneyball? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? So Moneyball to me is, is the movie that I relate with as, as an agency founder because everything about, is about less money, Highest impact, <laughs> correct? <laughs> that's ba like a founder. award bhi chahiye, Zomato bhi banna hai. Correct? So that's the, that's everyday life. It's also about uh, the user data in that sense, correct? So how possibly people who were seemingly not the best performing, not the aces, had the potential and data somewhere told Brad Pitt and the group who were evaluating it that they are the next unbeatable team. Correct? So it's a combination. As a founder, I definitely feel part of Moneyball all the time because of limited resources. But in the new age with, um, with the kind of data that we embrace every day, I think there's a potential for every underdog to be the next CSK in that, yeah. that context nice, of things. Nice. So I'll give you my answer. Have you guys seen this movie called Limitless by Bradley Cooper? No. Okay. It's, I mean, uh, he's, he's chance upon this drug right, which has made him, you know, uh, you know, go buck wild crazy and being able to complete things very quickly, super intelligence and all that stuff, right. And then uh, the story goes that, uh, you all should watch this movie, that uh, this drug is also going to kill him. So now he reverses the whole uh, logic, he's saying, okay, fine, if this drug is also going to kill me, let me use this drug to actually figure out what the cure is, why so I can be like this forever. Interesting. It's a very, very interesting movie. Yeah. So, uh, limitless is what I would choose. But yeah, uh, we've got maybe around seven to eight minutes left. I'm going to go to five minutes. So, yeah. So, we've, I'm going to talk about uh, the future technologies in marketing, right? Everyone, uh, uh, we're talking about AI, we're talking about, you know, blockchain, we're talking about its impact in, uh, you know, how are independent agencies like us, you know, uh, you know, quickly adapting those technologies to, to essentially, you know, make our lives easier for us as well as for our clients, right? Again, I'm going to start with Prashant on this, right? So the question out here is more specific. Which emerging technology do you think will go mainstream in marketing over the next five years? I think first, I would say full funnel marketing. It's, okay. It's been there for a while, but I don't think we're really doing it in its entirety. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the two integration across the full funnel is, uh, is still not, right, still not there because uh, different people have different capabilities. It's very difficult for a agency to have capabilities from brand to performance to actually lead acquisition and then nurturing it. So that's a very, very important trend going forward for people like us to embrace uh, and give it back to customers. I think blockchain we spoke about and service side data solution, I think is a key trend coming up. Uh, moving from the browser based data analytics to a service side data is going to be critical more from a point of view of data security, privacy, and transparency. So that, that's, that's going to be uh, key. Generative AI is everywhere. Meaning yes. it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. Like, no like Akhil said, people like us have to befriend AI and enable it in our workflows. If we can efficiently drive our operations using AI, generative AI, I think that's what keeps us ahead in this game. So that's, that's a very interesting uh, trend that's going to uh, come up very soon. Immersive experiences. AR, VR is 100% is going to be there. And how, again, we integrate it in our entire strategic approach for clients is going to be the key. How do we see it fitting into our acquisition program? We saw very interesting experiences in the morning today. So things like that. So I think these are the key trends that uh, are, are upon us. It's not too far away. 
Okay. Uh, Akhil, you want to go next? Yeah, so he's honestly covered yeah. most. Uh, okay. That's what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah. Like, but I think, uh, yeah. I think as, as we progress, an aspect of AI or a few aspects of AI, I expect uh, programmatic getting married to customer CDP, integration of CDP and, and DSPs. Correct? Okay. So personalization to a level where people will say, hey, Akhil, when are you planning your next trip? Correct? I don't see an ad that personalizes it for me as yet. So Got it. as we progress, uh, I think it will be hyper-personalized, so to say. Uh, yes, it's scary at times that Google knows more about me than my wife, but uh, but I think that's where the future is, correct? Everything, to, so uh, like I said, we now don't remember those large emailers that we did 12 years back, right? Those large banners that we did. So everything that is unpersonalized in that sense, yes, we are progressing, but I think it will get hyper-personalized. So that's one trend. I mean, it's an aspect of AI. Uh, that 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 we see. Second is I think building efficiencies again in in uh, media wise with with AI. Uh, I think it's about creating micro audience segments. Again, it's more a, a back end uh, point. But today, in there are large platforms that will dictate what your buy cost has to be. Assume you run a, a reach and frequency campaign on Facebook today. Correct. I refer to the platform because it's one of the largest in that sense. And it tells you that your cost is possibly 50 bucks. That 50 is defined by a combination of demand and supply. Mm -hmm. How do you know the most optimum consumer segments that lead to the 50 today? You don't. More often than that, you, not you don't. But with AI democratizing buys to an extent where everybody can choose segments that get them to b bring efficiencies to that. So I think that again is coming up. Uh, I expect that to be an important factor to democratize media buy in that sense. So AI will define self-serve models. Uh, Pooja can decide what her optimum CPM has to be. She doesn't yeah. have to wait for a media plan to decide if she has to give 40 or 30 rupees. She has to choose her segments and tell whoever is optimizing it for her. I think that's another bit that I see likely to come up in times to come. Also Again, AI is the mother, yes. uh, AI is the mother. Yes. whatever AI. you want to call it, yeah. it will be an, a manifestation or a, yeah, or like, a like There are, there are tools in AI which are tracking competition real time and telling you as per your campaign, what is the competition doing and how we can alter it in real time. You know, it's very interesting, which we never had access to. You yeah. know, this is going to change the game. Like I know my competition is putting uh, X amount of money and the creative is talking about this and I can just change it, you know. So this is this is something interesting that we are we are living into. Nice, Pooja, from a brand perspective. I think from a brand perspective, uh, we are looking at uh, three things. One is, of course, um, defining the audience very well so that you don't have overlaps, right? And if I have to give you an example of automotive right now, uh, the same person has a. Uh, same person can buy a punch, can buy an Exxon, can buy a curve, right? So the the money range is blurring, right? The price is blurring. So how do I ensure that I still get the interest for punch uniquely, then a Nexon uniquely, then uh, uh, a curve uniquely, right? And uh, not have so much of overlap in the audience. So hence, how do you define, sharply define the cohort of audiences, that's number one for me. I think the second part which comes in is what he said, which is hyper-personalization at scale, because uh, once you've defined the cohort, then you know the messaging that you want to give to that cohort, and how do you reach that person maximum number of times in, in the environment where he is acceptable to listen to my, uh, you know, listen to what I have to offer or how it integrates with his life. And the third part is um, agility and efficiency in media buying. Because that's, th like he said, I would want a real-time understanding of what my competition is doing, how my plans are going, how can I change it, and yet at the end of the month have some semblance of am I delivering the number or not. So nice. that's, that's what a client would want right now. Okay, I'm going to ask. One final question, but we'll have to be very quick on this, right? For all four of us, four of y'all. Um, for a young 23-year-old to 27-year-old, right, digital professional wanting to start an agency, 
right, or wanting to take his own, uh, um, you know, career on the next level, right? What would each of you guys say? Maybe one statement, Prashant. Build deep human connections. Nice. Aniket. I think the 23 year olds, I don't know how much they are reading. They should really catch up on their reading and be aware of what's happening in the market. If they're planning to make a career in advertising or trying to set up one, so that's, I think reading is something that's going to keep them up. Okay. Pooja. <laughs> I don't have one line, but I have be curious because that's what will lead you to experiment much more. Be more grounded in understanding the business because ultimately what you do is going to help somebody deliver their business. So be curious, be, uh, be more grounded to the business and be more agile. And uh, needless to say, clients now are looking to experiment, right? So we are okay to experiment and fail, but not be at the same space. So you have the entire landscape open for you guys. Akhil, yeah. more specifically for new agency founders, younger ones. See, uh, I start by saying, uh, even at the bottom percentile, you've got a set of us sitting here and having this conversation. So uh, the agency model is here to stay. Uh, AI or products like AI can only build efficiency in human beings, correct? There's no replacement that I anticipate. So the agency model of business will continue to exist. Uh, you will have to be agile, embrace agility. She covered that point. But life is very dynamic. In the last 12 years or whatever we've been doing, we've seen the digital world turn upside down in so many ways. So agility uh, is, is a given for anybody who aspires to become an agency founder. The ability to deal with ambiguity, again, correct? The, especially the agency side of business is very ambiguous. Most briefs are at 5 p.m. in the, in the evening. And the expectation is, uh, a plan with all data, all science, everything that there can be at 10 a.m. in the morning, correct? So you have to be agile. At the same time, you have to understand the possible expectation that the client has, bridge that gap, deal with that ambiguity to be able to deliver something that is worthwhile to the client, correct? So I think these are, uh, these are three nuggets that I will have. The model per se is here to stay. Agility is very important if you're looking at scaling up. The ability to deal with ambiguity makes you different from others in your, in your journal. So I think these are three points from my end. Thank you so much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you, Naveen. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you.